Hey y'all, welcome back to another ballistics gel test. Today I've got some Nosler ballistic tip for you, but it's in 3030 Winchester. And here is the box for that Nosler ballistic tip ammo for the 3030. Let's flip it around. Well, here, here's your little side card 150 grain ballistic tip. Flip it around to the back, it's vertical. Here is all of your ballistics information. Something very interesting to point out with this ammo, it is billed at a muzzle velocity of 2100 feet per second. Typically your 150 grain 3030 ammo is billed at 2390. So this is going quite a bit slower than that. It'll be really interesting to see how fast it is actually going and what that lower velocity produces with this, with this particular bullet. And I'm going to assume that they have it at that lower velocity because this bullet is going to expand very easily and rapidly. And they're trying to keep it from just blowing up completely, but we'll see. And let's go ahead and pull the ammo out of the box and take a look. So here's how it comes in this little plastic holder deal. Pull one out. The brass does look very nice. Here is a close look at that bullet. It's got that big green plastic tip. Really curious to see how this stuff does. Let's go shoot it. And my test rifle today is going to be my 1980s vintage Glenfield Model 30A, basically a Marlin Model 336. It has a 20 inch barrel up top. I have a vintage Leopold M84X scope and bringing up the rear, of course, I have one of my Mason leather cartridge cuffs. I've got the caliber stamped into it right there. Check out my website, masonleather.com. I would absolutely love to make you one. And let's come around to the other side. I want to show you, I've got my white tail deer design on this one. We'll be taking three shots from 100 yards, firing into 10% ballistics gel that has been calibrated to meet the FBI's ballistics testing protocol. And while ballistics gel isn't an exact proxy for big game, it does provide a repeatable medium through which to test various bullets and ammo against each other. After the shots, we'll examine bullet expansion, weight retention, penetration, and velocity. My goal is to provide hunters like you and I with the most objective information possible to help us make the best choice for our particular hunting situation. The ballistics gel in this video has been sourced from Clear Ballistics. You can find a link in the description. So let's go ahead and shoot it. And we are down here at the blocks after shooting that Nosler ballistic tip, 150 grain 30 30 load. And I'm doing two at a time now to make videoing these more efficient. So that one is actually the federal hammer down load. And this one is the ballistic tip. So this is what you're going to see from now on, sort of a double setup, but in separate videos, of course, coming over, we did manage to capture two of those ballistic tip bullets. And I will note that I had a couple of table strikes trying to get these things in the block. I shot quite a few rounds. My rifle, uh, the zero is nowhere close to where these particular bullets are going. And we will look at velocity in a minute and these were going really slow. So anyways, we'll go ahead and take a look. This bullet right here that you can see, that was a table strike. And then there's another piece in there that's part of a table strike as well. So we're not gonna count those ones. We're gonna count these two over here that just went in gel and never hit the table. So penetration wise for this one, we're at about, I'm gonna start rounding to the nearest inch. It's just, we're at about, I'm gonna give it 21 and a half inches. And then we had another one that went pretty deep right there that one we will give that's right about 27 inches so a little bit inconsistent penetration wise and another thing to note these things just did not blow up like you would think a ballistic tip bullet would and i think that largely has to do with how slow these were going there are some opening you know some wound tracks in there but they're not very explosive they're not you know what you would think of when you think ballistic tip bullet over there my hammer down bullets actually created a wider wound track than these but nevertheless you do have some wound track it starts at about the two inch mark which is pretty standard going on back going on back going on back and then it peters out right there at about the 12 inch mark nothing explosive but it is in that range that you want to see for white tailed deer and things like that and let's go ahead and look at the velocities for that Nosler ballistic tip 150 grain 30 30 load our high was 1978, our low was 1826, and our average was 1894, so definitely going a little bit slower than most 3030 ammo.
And here we are looking at those Nosler Ballistic Tip 150 grain bullets fired from the 3030 as recovered from the gel. This wound up being a pretty interesting test. So first let's go over weight retention. We saw 140 and 138 grains for an average of 139 grains retained weight. That's 93% weight retention. A little bit surprising considering these are Ballistic Tip bullets. You would think they would shed a little bit more weight, that they might expand a little bit more, but they didn't and there's a big reason why. And moving on to expansion, we saw 0.55 inches and 0.51 inches for an average of 0.53 inches expanded diameter. That works out to 1.7x expansion. That is a little bit on the lower end of what I've seen from a lot of 150 grain 3030 30 loads. It's not horrible, but it's not great either. And then on to velocity, and that's where this load was very, very surprising. So I'm going to start actually with the factory build velocity. For whatever reason, on the box, Nosler lists these as going 2,100 feet per second. So the vast majority of 150 grain factory 3030 30 loads are listed as going 2,390 feet per second across the board from all the manufacturers. Why these are listed so slow, I'm not sure but they definitely did come in extremely slow. The high velocity was only 1978, the low was 1826 for an average of 1894, so even though the build velocity was extremely slow, they came in even slower than that, 206 feet per second slower than the already very slow factory build velocity, so that is why I'm sure we saw minimal expansion and rather high weight retention. These things are just plodding along. I don't know what's going on with these, but they're not going very fast, and I wish they would go a little faster. And what's funny is as soon as I shot these, I could tell these things had noticeably less recoil than any other 150 grain 3030 load I have tested. Moving on to penetration, we saw 21 and a half inches and 27 inches respectively. And again, I wish I could have recovered a third bullet, but it just didn't work out. And that works out to an average of 24 inches of penetration. So actually pretty good as compared to some other 3030 loads. But again, I think we got that deep penetration because we got just so little expansion. There just wasn't a whole lot of drag on these bullets going through the blocks. And now on to kinetic energy with a 150 grain bullet going on average 1,894 feet per second. We are looking at 1,195 foot pounds of energy at the muzzle. And y'all, that is very, very weak for 150 grain 30, 30 load energy wise. And that is due to that extremely low average velocity. Most of your 150 grain 3030 loads are going to be in the 16 to 1700 foot pound range of kinetic energy. That's real kinetic energy with real velocities, not what they're printing on the box, y'all. That's what we're getting in the real world out of 20 inch barrels here. So with this coming in so slow velocity wise, we're going to have, you know, a correspondingly weak kinetic energy number. Man, this is down there with some 223 hunting loads because I've tested a lot of 223 ammunition, a lot of the medium game uh, 223 ammunition that's out there. Those videos might not be out yet, but some of the better ones come in around 1,200 plus foot pounds of energy. So this is a bit ridiculous for a 3030. All right, y'all, time for my final thoughts on that Nosler Ballistic Tip 150 green load out of the 3030. Very interesting results, very strange in fact. Let's go ahead and go over it. I've got my cheat sheets here. Weight retention was very high, 93%, but I think that's because of the very, very low velocity that we saw and relatively low expansion. The bullet didn't have any chance to shed any weight. This thing just wasn't hitting hard enough to break any pieces off. Um, expansion wise, 1.7x expansion. That's on sort of the lower end of what I've seen with a lot of 150 grain 30 30 loads. And again, I think that's due to that very low impact velocity, which we'll talk about now. So this ammo, this Nosler Ballistic Tip 30 30 ammo, for whatever reason, is billed by the factory at 2100 feet per second at the muzzle. Now, almost all of your 150 grain 30 30 hunting loads from Remington, Winchester, Federal, Pretty much everybody across the board are billed at 2,390 feet per second. Why these are billed so much slower, 290 feet per second slower, I don't know. Obviously, they're loaded weaker for some reason. And I think what is interesting, so here's the box right here. And right here on the back of the box, it says there's three bullet points. It says consistently tight groups. I didn't test it for accuracy. Your results with your rifle may vary. Um, here's the one I want to hit on. Rapid expansion 
and devastating shock. It says it right on the back of the box. You can go back to the beginning of the video, pause it, zoom in, and read it yourself. Rapid expansion and devastating shock. Well, we didn't see rapid expansion, that's for sure. We barely saw any expansion at all at these impact velocities. So very strange. And even with it being billed at 2100 feet per second, we didn't come anywhere near that out of the 20 inch barrel of my rifle. We only attained 1894 feet per second on average. So we were already 290 feet per second slower than most of your 150 grain factory 3030 loads, at least as far as the build velocity. And then we came in 206 feet per second slower than that. So these things are just barely moving along. And so at that velocity, we're definitely not seeing that rapid expansion and devastating shock. It's just that did not happen. And to the people I'm sure in the comments, this happens every time, who are going to say, oh, maybe you have a slow barrel on your rifle. It's not. I fired a whole ton of loads. None of them come in this. Well, not none of them. Some of them are really, really slow. But I've had some loads that exceed the factory stated velocity out of my gun. It's not a slow barrel for the people who are going to say that. Quit your coping. It never fails. There's always somebody who has to just defend one or the other kind of ammunition to make themselves feel better because it's what they have. I don't know what the deal is with that. I'm just reporting the cold hard facts here. I mean, honestly, hunters drink the freaking copium more than just about anybody I know. I mean, you do a test, you film it, you present the cold hard facts, and they still want to make excuses for stuff where it blatantly doesn't even do what they're advertised as doing. But anyway, on to penetration. These things penetrated okay. On average, 24 inches. It was a little bit variable, but it penetrated in that range that I like to see. And then on to kinetic energy with your 150 grain bullet going 1,894 feet per second. Ludicrously slow. We're looking at 1,195 foot-pounds of energy at the muzzle. Y'all, there are 223 loads that are, you know, meant for deer hunting. Those videos are coming up, by the way, that generate more muzzle energy than this 3030 load. So all in all, some very interesting results. If we had seen these going closer to the factory build velocity of 2,100 feet per second, I don't know how you're going to get to that. Maybe if you're shooting it out of a 24-inch barreled Marlin XLR or something, you might come close to that. Maybe we would see these expand a little bit more, but from a 20 inch barreled carbine, which is what 99.9% .9 of people shooting a 30-30 are using, these things aren't coming close to 2100 feet per second. I don't know what's going on here. If you're looking for a low recoil 30-30 load, that's not what these are advertised as. Doesn't say that on the box anywhere. But if you're looking for a low recoil option for a 30-30, you could look into these. Um, personally, what would I use this ammo for? Nothing. Based on these results, my opinion, I wouldn't use these for anything. If you've used this particular load on game, let me and everybody else know in the comments how it did for you. Hey, if you enjoy these videos, check out my website, masonleather.com, and get yourself some leather gear handmade by me just for you. I've been handcrafting leather gear for hunters for over a decade, and I would love to make you something. The link is in the video description. And check out my channel for more hunting ammo ballistics gel tests. I have some big news. Lots of you have emailed me or commented how much value you get out of my videos. And you've asked me, how can you be a part of this and help support the channel? Well, I got to work, and now I have a way. I've created a Patreon account where you can join me in helping our fellow hunters. Click the link in this video's description and watch my Patreon welcome video, where I describe to you how your help will impact this channel and our community of hunters as a whole. And when you join me on Patreon, you'll get a lot more than I can give you here on YouTube. You'll have to go watch that welcome video linked in the description to find out the details. I'll see you there.